Hey, everybody. Let's go ahead and ask questions, share experiences, whatever you'd like. You can unmute yourself, type in, go ahead and fire away. And go ahead, Linda. Hey, Linda. All right. Hey, Greg. Nice to see you again, as mm -hmm. always. <clears throat> First, I have to thank you so much for the, I forget what you call it, the white lights breathing through the skin pores healing thing you did. That oh, yeah. Amazing for me. On Saturday, I woke up with a cold sinus something or other, mm -hmm. and I did that. And then the follow up, you know, with the the mystic vibration piece, and I, I was like, I think I'm healed, but yeah. I, I wasn't completely. But it's okay. It was so much better. <laughs> yeah. so it, I mean, you're you're doing a lot of things with that, but when you're opening up the health rays, you're absorbing good, healthy energy from the environment, you're kicking off negative energy. And if I remember right, didn't we do like a three brain thing with it? Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, that gets energy, you know, Kundalini moving up and energy going down and, you know, yeah. it just, it gets all the circuits firing. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not specific to a particular condition, but when everything's working right, it becomes easier to treat. And the body just a lot of times takes over for itself. Yeah, yeah. it honestly, fantastic. I'm going to just keep on using it. So oh, thank good, you. Good. Now, my question tonight has mm -hmm. to do with somebody else who's here on the call, Rebecca, who could okay. you could probably unmute as well, Rebecca. Rebecca has idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Okay. I did uh, the pH protocol for her last week. Okay. And... Um, I told her, I said, I think you should come on the call and let's see if Greg can give you any ideas, suggestions, and directions. So I'm going to sort of turn it over to Rebecca. If you want to say hi, Rebecca, and just tell hey, him Rebecca. a little more about your situation. Hello. Um, I also, Linda shared those uh, videos with me and I've used them a couple of times and they they were fabulous. So thank you. Um, I was diagnosed about three years ago. Um, I take, I've done quite a bit of research on my own. I've cleaned up my diet and I take a series of systemic enzymes. Um, okay. I also use oregano oil sometimes as needed. I use OSHA root either in honey or tincture form. Right. So I'm, I'm kind of doing a, a broad, broad approach um, and also now pranic healing and using the actual protocol for pulmonary fibrosis has been great. Okay. Um, before I was using asthma and autoimmune and trying different ones. Um, I had a pulmonary function test and I'm getting the results on, but I know that I had some decline in lung function. Um, so I'm just looking for other ways to support it. The other piece of this mm. is, um, and your video spoke to this, there, there is a karmic component sure. here and yeah, there's yeah. a generational component because my mother, my younger sister and my son um, also have been diagnosed with it. Uh, my son really? and I are the only two still still living. Um, so there's there's that component too. People join and, and you move around. So I feel like I'm, if my eyes are going crazy, it's because I'm trying to find you on the screen. <laughs> hmm. So what what else do you need to know from me? So, so what's the big symptom that's presenting right now that is like the thing for you? Um, the coughing and the tightness in the chest. Tightness in the chest. Coughing. From an emotional perspective, it's the if this gets worse, I I I don't want oxygen. I don't I don't want to go down right. that road. So there's then then the fear constricts and you know your mind starts going. And how, how is the oregano working for you? Like you you use it from time to time and it's quite helpful, semi-helpful? Um, I use it for probably 10 days at a time whenever I'm feeling like I just need another little boost. Um, or this time of year, I tend to use it more often because the house is closed up. There's pet dander. There's other things going on. Um, part of it, frankly, is just that it gives you such a it's such a strong scent. Um, it sort of, whew, it must be doing something good because, mm -hmm. you know, it, it expands your chest a little bit. And any other health issues that are happening right now? No. 
And and how old are you? I, I do have a lot of food sensitivities, but those have been there for 20 plus years. Okay. Um, uh, I am 65. Okay. So food sensitivities and no tendency for like rashes or, or um, psoriasis, nothing, nothing like nope. that. Okay. Nope. How about when, when you exercise or when you're in the heat, are you able to sweat? Not very much. Yeah. Okay. So this, this, this is where I would go. Like we could throw a bunch of things at it, but like when something like this is going on, I like to do one thing at a time. And the thing is with like the lungs, you, you know, we, we want to kind of loosen up some of that tissue. We want to have like an antispasmodic effect, but you know, basically like reducing like what you'd call like fascia or connective tissue um, make the blood a little bit more fluid so it's a little bit more penetrating but part of what happens is the, um, the lungs partially detoxify through the skin and um, I, I think we need to treat um, the skin the, I think the skin is tied a little bit to the food allergies like the food sensitivities and you, you know like I've shared in the past where um uh you know i ran a study on like we had 102 uh patients and we were doing allergies and you know a lot of them were digestive allergies mm -hmm. and uh sensitivities and things and so we we did this like broad spectrum thing where we we treated a lot of different things in the person and then stood back and went okay what produced a result what didn't produce a result and one of the big triggers for digestive sensitivities was actually the skin. And, oh. um, you know, it's it's the potential for detoxification. And really, when the skin is backed up, the, the lungs, the liver, the kidney, the gallbladder, the spleen, they don't quite detoxify like they should. And so sometimes when you start to stimulate like more proper skin function or um, like detoxing the skin, it stimulates all those areas to, to start to detoxify as well. And uh, stress, or not stress, the skin can get fatigued, just like your nervous system or your immune system or whatever, the skin can actually get quite, quite fatigued. And one of the things that can happen that the lymphatic component of the skin diminishes and it produces like a kind of skin congestion and so you know energetically like you said like those health rays that felt felt good it's, that's opening up the pores of the skin but sometimes what happens is those pores are um just like backed up with like metabolic waste and stuff and so i would say the next phase that i think would be good for you to do would be to work with um, uh, essential oil called helichrysum. And helichrysum would be good for the lungs, like it would be good for inhaling. It would be good to take even a few drops internally, just because again, for the lungs, but it also makes the, the blood a little bit less viscous. And so by doing that, it makes it more penetrating into the tissues that are, are needing like to have improved blood supply. And then it is one of the, by far the best things to open up skin congestion. And so I would inhale it. I would take a couple of drops internally a day. And then I would take um, either a salt bath in it, you know, like 12, 15 drops, or um, use a body tonic, which is alcohol and witch hazel with a bunch of helichrysum in it. And, you know, you shake it up and then just rub it all over your body. But do that on a daily basis. And the thing that's nice about treating skin congestion with helichrysum, it's not a forever thing. Like a lot of times, uh, even after just a few applications, the skin starts functioning so much better that you don't even really need to continue. You know, that you have wow. the condition that you have, maybe I'd say even four or five, six applications to the, to the body. Um, probably would open it enough to where you could kind of move on from that. 
And so I would still inhale it. Um, it's very good for scar tissue and hardening mm. of tissue. Um, okay. And so I would say, so let's have you start with that. And, you know, we could throw a bunch of things at it, but I like to do one thing at a time, just so for one, you're not overwhelming the body. And two, you can see what's working and what's not working. Um, yeah. And I have know. thrown many things at it and now I'm not sure what to cut out because I, exactly. I'm, like, I'm you afraid. Know, that's, <laughs> yeah. Any, anytime you have a chronic condition, that's kind of what we all do. It's like, you know, we, we start throwing everything at it and then it's like, what works, what doesn't work. And pretty soon you get tired of everything and you just stop everything or, you know, yeah. um, the, the other thing that you could mm. do that's real simple is um, lemon juice in your water. Uh, oh, I, I know it's like really super simple, but you know, I do that. Then, oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, it helps the liver to detoxify it. It does, you know, thin down the blood a little bit, um, normalizes mineral deficiencies. You know, there's a bunch of reasons why, why to do that. So I, I'd say with those two things, along with your healing sessions that you're getting done, I'd like, let's have you do that for a couple of weeks and then let's reevaluate where you're at. But I mean, I think that's a solid choice for where you're at right now. Um, I'd really like to see the skin opened up quite substantially. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't really sweat. So even even yeah. working out. So yeah, okay. yeah. So see, like there, the, the goal would be that when you're in heat, like when everybody else is sweating, that you're sweating. When you're working out, you're breaking a, a sweat or perspire. You know, we want to see something like that happening because that means that your organs are de de um, detoxifying and your your lungs are able to eliminate not just through exhalation but also through um, through the skin and it's not something that the western medicine looks at but like um, uh, Chinese medicine looks at like what's going on with the skin when it comes to lung issues and so we, let's just open that up and then see how you do with that let's take a step see how it improves things and then we can either go deeper or we can move to the next thing okay. but I, I think getting that really solid under you it would be a very good you know step okay Thank you. You're thank so you, welcome. Thank you. Oh, my and goodness. What was your name again? Uh, Rebecca. Rebecca. Okay. Good, good. Yeah. You know, reach out if you need something from us or, you know, you need questions about something or just give us an update, good okay. or bad. You know. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you're you, so thank welcome. You. And thank you, Linda, for, for introducing yeah. me and yeah, Lynn, bringing, bringing me to this. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad you were here. Thank you so much, Greg. I appreciate it. that. Was fascinating yeah. to learn all about the skin. It makes me even think ah. about the, the skin pore breathing thing and what that's doing for us yeah, on that like, level. You know, so like with pH, like if you think about, you know, you go through and you evaluate, you look at the chakras and you go, okay, look at the liver, look at the look at the lungs. Um, if you scan her skin, it's it's very depleted. Like, so you can scrub it and, you know, use like green and like with something like this, sometimes you use like green and then red, even though it's sweeping, you're not really energizing, you're sweeping like, you know, how you would treat um, like an old wound. You know, I, in fact, I think they might have even taken that out of the book. But like old days, you would do green and then red, like no orange. And the reason being that the, the green is like any any time you're using green pranas it's very moistening and then red just is um you know circulation so it's it's moistening as well or orange is drying and so you're you're hydrating like you're cleaning something but you're also making the energy like more refined not as sticky and your your um any any time that you hydrate the tissue, you release connective tissue and fascia. So that was what was meant by treating an old wound is basically you're dealing with like scar tissue. Like it, it could be like what you would call like um, uh, a lesion, like they'll call it a lesion. It doesn't mean tumor or anything. It's just, it's like a knot in the muscle, but in the connective tissue. And so people, a lot of times just refer to that as scar tissue, 
but it's just a lesion in the fascia. It's just an area that's lacked blood and moisture for a period of time, and then it just binds up. And then it affects neurological function, detoxification, circulation, and so, and can eventually even cause like um, postural misalignments, you know, depending on how big it is. And, and so um, the more that you kind of open up the skin, it will even improve immunity. Like it just, it does so many things. And so, yeah, if you look at our skin, like it's, it's depleted and it's really more than depleted. It's just congested. It's, it's like physically congested. So the helichrysum should open that up. I, I mean, rarely do I need to do more than just helichrysum on that. Yeah. Great. Thank you so very much. Yeah, you're so welcome. Um, on the topic of skin, just really quick, someone's mm -hmm. asking, what about dry brush? Um, dry, dry brush will help. It does move the lymphatic uh, components, but sometimes it still doesn't open up the, the congestion in the skin. It could be done in conjunction with this, but usually you have to use something to kind of really stimulate the, um, the skin. And so um, Helichrysum works. Um, sometimes Yara will will work, but instead of Yara, I use milfoil. Um, uh, there's one other. I want to say it might be ginger, but Helichrysum is kind of the go-to one for me. Like I just, man, it works so good so often. You know, one of the other byproducts sometimes is when the skin gets real congested. When it gets really bad, it can actually start to cause. Um, like puffiness down in the legs, like down by the ankles and things like that. And so, you know, just a little bit of fluid retention, but it could even turn into what you would call pitted edema, which is like when you push on the puff, you know, the part that's got a little bit of water retention, normally it would bounce back, but pitted edema, you push on it and it just stays indented for a little while. A lot of times that's um, not just poor lymphatic movement, but it's also skin congestion. Would, um, should there be an increase of water as well? Um, a, a lot of times, if you just do the helichrysum, like you don't really have to change a lot of things. Yeah. Thank you. And then go ahead, Sonia, then Ralph. Hey, Sonia. Let's get did, you on. Did you get to talk to that therapist yet? I sent a message, but I haven't heard back yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I did only one session of those ear th things for um, 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 that you showed me because my ear started releasing plasma and my hearing got worse. And mm. so I've just been winding it. Fans. Yeah, like if it's aggravating it at all, I would just stop. Yeah. So like some liquid started coming out? Yeah. It w wasn't like red blood. It was like plasma. That happened when I first injured it for some weeks. But... Boy, so Sonia, that's, that sounds like a, a tough one. So um, I've been under uh, unwinding it Yesterday, I got it to a position where I could hear better, but it doesn't last, especially if I'm chewing it. It goes, and I still have the tinnitus. Mm. And, and you inhaled the sage, like on the brain and on the ear canals and all that? Yeah. Did it help at all? I don't know notice anything. Okay. Yeah, such an odd injury. Yeah, let, let's just see what I hear back from from that specialist. Okay. Yeah. And then go ahead, Ralph. Then Cindy. Hey, hey Mr. Ralph. Let's get you unmuted. 
Okay, let's try this. Hey, hey. Hi. Um, you talked about Lama yoga practice this weekend and doing it on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. um, question, if I, if so if I'm doing like nine breaths of Lama yoga for a set, how many sets should I stack together? Um, you, you could do quite a bit. Um, okay. You know, traditionally we do like 49, but mm -hmm. the instructions to me from uh, multiple teachers were, you know, have at it. And okay. One teacher was like, even if you're sitting there watching a movie, when it gets to a boring part, do a bunch of, you know, <laughs> do a bunch of the breaths. And like, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I did that for a while, but, uh, uh, it, it, like I had to time like when to do it. Like I don't have the issue now, but back then, like it started to get hard to go outside because it was making me so sensitive. Like I, I like I couldn't go to the store because I could just feel, you know, I just okay. feel everything and it just felt uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. Now I don't have that issue. So if you if that issue does arise for you, um back off. <laughs> You back off, but you know, there's this thing, you know, because even we're, you know, we're going to be discussing it both in Plant Prana Circle and in the Astara Circle is there's levels or degrees of, of Lama Yoga. And there's like kind of stages that you're trying to like develop or accomplish. And one of them is, you know, you go through and you're doing the Lama Yoga breath, and then you do start to feel kind of. Mm, I, you you could say like tension in the environment you could just feel you basically just kind of feel everything that's like chaotic like at first your mind goes oh nothing's ever chaotic everything's fine and then you start quieting everything down you go, that's chaotic that's chaotic that's chaotic and it's n not necessarily you it's just somebody's being weird this is going on this is unresolved this is you know it's just like this list and mm -hmm. our our yeah. body unconsciously reacts to these things because it tries to like establish a kind of order and and so like if really if you think about a lot of what feng shui is is you know people have like oh this does this and this does that and this element does this and this element does that yeah that's true but really what it's trying to do is minimize chaos in the environment so that your main men doesn't really overactivate and so mm -hmm. because your main men overactivates to establish order whenever there's chaos in the environment right so one yeah. one of the deeper levels of Dion is that you have an increase of sustained awareness and then you become aware of these things in the environment and you um, relax into them. Like you kind of can put your awareness on it. And it's how like we do the situational awareness it's like taking that to another degree where yeah. you go, okay, that, that situation's a little, you know, even if there's no conflict, it's like that person's being a little judgy, that person's being a little, uh, that person's being a little pushy, that, you know, whatever it is. And you just like, you're almost all like allowing it to be, you're like, you're relaxing into it and you go to the next situation, you relax into it and you do the next one, you relax into it. And all of a sudden you notice everything feels a lot more peaceful and as you do that, it's it's like it's um it's a uh, a phase of Lama Yoga or the Turtle Breath, and like a deeper. Once you hit that, you go to this deeper place where not only are you just allowing things to be, because like you know I use that word because when we try to like go, oh, I need to stabilize this. I need to get away from this. I need to release this. It's like, it still kind of controls you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that situation yeah. is like having too big of an influence on you. And it's just like, okay, these people are being a jerk to me. 
I'll just sit with that. Like, you know, you just sit, like, sit with all these things. And so then at some point, the next level is the back heart becomes more activated and it perceives these things, it transmutes these things, and then it moves the information up to the the mind, especially the intuitive mind, to where it becomes easier to make the adjustments when you're dealing with people like this because you're a, a lot more aware, a lot more present. But it becomes a lot less personal. Like, you know, because you've mm -hmm. you've transmuted some of it, it's um it, it's like it diminishes the sting, you know, the that phase yeah. they they call it um in Kabbalistic practices, they call it the loving embrace of the mother. Like when you when you get through that first phase, you're you're kind of dealing with mm, authority is not the right word. But sometimes like you know, it's like how we think about authority logically is like oh that person has authority over me or da, 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 da. some sometimes authority is there's a group of people at work that are just dumb you, you know what i mean like the group because of their numbers has a kind of authority over you where you're like i have to deal with these people because they're all being obnoxious and they're being not very bright and they're they're doing these things and so it doesn't mean that they're telling you what to do, but there there is a thing where you have to deal with them. And so in that first I've phase, had those. Kind of, yeah. yeah, we all have them. Like, you know, it's whatever it is. Like it's, you know, even just having your to-do list is, you know, part of that. And so um, I'm trying to remember what they call that. I, I want to say they refer to that in Kabbalistic teachings as, the rod of Aaron, you know, it's, it's um, like a staff that has to do with authority, but Aaron also has to do with intuition and prophecy and all these things. And so by being able to be like kind of non-reactive and relax into those things, and you're just allowing them to be, you kind of take their power away. Like that, that is literally the rod of Aaron. You know, you're, you're taking, it's like you're taking the power back kind of. And then from there mm -hmm. you sit with, um, you sit with this loving embrace of the mother and it's, it's kind of a transmutation process. Um, and it's illuminating the mind in a way that it makes you more intuitive. Like you, you have like a greater depth perception. And then in that, just in those two steps, as the heart activates, just that starts to dissipate karma. Like just that. And then mm -hmm. from there, you start, you know, how we'd go through and and um, sit with our awareness on the spine is that is your ability then to start regenerating in these situations like how do i adjust how do i adapt how do i i shift these things when when they're happening like how how do i grow how do i move around these obstacles and then eventually you start bringing light into the situation so there's like these kind of five like phases and um at first, when you're doing the breath and you're like, okay, I'm going to do this 49 times, you could say it's like you're you're getting used to it. Like, you know, you're getting used to what it does to your body. You're getting used to how it shifts your body. You're getting used to how it shifts your mind and and the sensitivity that comes with it all. But like after the body gets acclimated, it's kind of game on. Like it starts to be like, when I really want to work this, I'm going to work it. And it doesn't mean you do it all the time. But like, if there's like, I have three or four days and I have some downtime and 
you know, you could go deep. You could go really deep. And so, you know, I remember one saying to the guru, I was like, what if I did it 400 times? And he looked at me and he chuckled and he goes, yeah, go ahead, have at it. And then yeah. he goes, did you get up to 400? And I was like, no. <laughs> but I like, I think I got up to like, you, you know, I lost count, but I was probably at like two or 250 or something. And, um, you know, I didn't do a lot that weekend. You know, it, it was... It, it puts you like a little bit in another place. And so you almost have to plan like I'm I'm not going to be doing logical things for a few days. And, you know, the, the other thing is it makes you a little sleepy. It makes you a little tired. You know, just because you're you're deeper in rest and repair, you're deeper in intuitive thought than normal. And so if the body is um, a little worn down, then you'll you'll get a little bit more tired but usually what happens when you come out of it is you feel more revitalized and more refreshed than you did you know prior you know i always find that i f i feel like the word would be like exuberant or something like i you know i feel like like uplifted or kind of happy and like very expressive in it mm -hmm you know versus just like oh i feel a little better like it's almost like uh puts a little pep in your step or something and so i i, I would play with it like i would push the envelope a little bit but you know if you're really going to push it just be prepared for like okay for the next day or two salt baths and naps that's what it's about you know and then after a while you'll kind of get the hang of this is what we're going to do. And so this is actually, um, it's part of the medulla and the vagus nerve class is, to, I mean, you're, you're basically working this holy name by going through and doing this. And, uh, it's, it's about, This this sounds weird, but oh, I'm down with weird. I can't. I grew yeah. up in Berkeley area. <laughs> aren't, aren't we all? If if you're on the Zoom, you're probably down with weird a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, <laughs> right? But it, it's it's not always a way that people look at it. But you could say that It, it aligns like an inner and an outer, outer part of your energy body. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you have a nervous system that's very physical, but you also have like an inner nervous system that is very etheric. And it's like it aligns the different bodies, like the physical body, the etheric body, the emotional body, the mental body, the causal body. Sometimes when we're not assimilating energy very well or not healing at a very fast rate or we have some emotion or some state that we're having a hard time shaking off, you could look at it as a bunch of different, like, you know, a pattern or a condition or a system's not working well, which is all true. But on a deeper level, there's a lacking of alignment between the different bodies. And so the soul energy can't can't like grab hold or or can't facilitate the healing process in whatever body is having the issue. And and so by going through and working these aspects, you're to a very deep level, you're you're aligning the different bodies and you're changing your blood. You know, you're shifting and changing the blood. And so, uh, I would encourage you to explore that. Okay. You know, it's, it's so one let's say I'm to... on, a, on a, go ahead. Let's say I'm on a crowded bus and there's lots of people around and I want to keep my weird factor somewhat under cover. And they don't want to go bouncing my head up and down. Yeah. Do, 
can I just move my eyes up and down in a case like that? So what I would do there is instead of worrying about the, the breath and all of that, you know, so you're, you're, you're working the breath, right. Mm -hmm. And then in between you're working different aspects. So that first one where you're, you're observing the environment and it doesn't have to be uh, an environment that is personal to you. Like you could be out at the mall and you just go, okay, right. I'm going to sit with mm -hmm. the kids running around screaming and the, the people doing this and the person who just spilled their coffee and they're, you know, you just kind of observe everything going on and you just right. keep relaxing into it. And so like in public, I would just do that and, um, you know, I had a, t a teacher that when when some of us would reach a certain stage, he would go, OK, I want you to be able to reach that, you know, that state of expansion. I'm going to take you to a very special place. And he would take us to the DMV, you know, like, <laughs> and he is like, OK, you think you got inner peace? Let's see it. <laughs> you know and it's like <laughs> you know because everybody's cranky nobody wants to be there everybody's all whatever there's all kinds of you know stress there and he was like come on call it up on a dime now call it up on a dime if you can do it here you can do it anywhere yeah and you know we, we'd all kind of complain about it but you, you know when you start doing the practice where you go okay i'm I'm relaxing into the person being cranky. I'm relaxing into those people shooting me dirty looks. I'm relaxing into, you know, how ridiculous this is. Like, you know, you just start going down the list and all of a yeah, sudden yeah. you're like, you know, in, in that weird situation, you still can feel the peace or the divinity. And so, you know, if you're out in situations where um you know you want to do practice but you know you don't want to be like you know bobbing your head around and right doing whatever. just you know either relax into everything that's going on like just keep observing everything like looking around and keep relaxing into it like you just keep awareness on your body and you just keep relaxing into it relaxing into it either that or you keep your awareness on your back heart and you're not even really trying to relax into it. It's like you're looking, but with your heart, it's your, your heart becomes almost like you're a, like a set of eyes mm -hmm. and you're just looking and you're not, you're not trying to breathe something into it or activate it. You're just everything you look at, your awareness is just on your back heart and um, things will happen. Things will definitely happen. Okay yeah um the, the the back heart thing sound, sounds like really easy it's way harder than it sounds <laughs> like it's way harder than it sounds really the practice of lama yoga makes it easier but it's not as easy as you would think you know because you sit on you go oh i could totally do that and then you know 30 seconds into it you're like squirrel okay here i go again squirrel you know you just your mind keeps bouncing off of it to to be able just to relax, be aware of your heart and observe the surroundings. It takes practice. It takes a lot of practice. Okay. Um, so in one of the Astara classes that I did with Astara lessons, mm -hmm. we were doing the turtle breath and keeping and at the top of the turtle breath would put awareness on the Ajna. Is there any advantage um, to that, doing that? That's actually that? more of the materialization breath. And yeah. that would be, that would, so the difference between the the Lama Yoga with the turtle breath and then the materialization breath is the throat lock. Mm -hmm. So I would do that after you do the work with the spine, you know, because that is how you're physicalizing light into the environment. Okay. So, you know, we practice them at all, you know, all of them, but like really, when when you're working these four five aspects you you wait till the end to do the thing with the materialization breath but okay. yeah when, when you come time to do that you can totally do the thing with the ajna okay but with the normal lama yoga and the turtle breath um not so much yeah. okay all right yeah. 
And just to comment upon detoxing the skin, I thought it was curious. You said green and red on the skin. I remember this picture that you showed us in a recent class about this lion that had oh, yeah. green limbs and these red yeah, stars. Yeah. That's really interesting. We, we, um, we are going to do that practice um, either the week before Christmas or a couple of days before Christmas. I, I oh. have to sit and look at the schedule, but we're, we're going to do a little thing with that. Oh, cool. Yeah. I'm in. Send me the email. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're just going to do like a little free, like maybe three hour or one, you know, one day thing where yeah. we kind of prep for the holidays. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Have a great one. Um, just really quick on the skin, Greg. Um, does she need to use the essential oil and the body tonic both? They don't have a bathtub, so... If you don't have a bathtub, I would use the body tonic. So the essential oil... You want to inhale it. Um, you want to take a little bit internally, but if you don't have a bathtub, the body tonic is the way. So you can either get the oil and make your own body tonic, which we have the ways to make like liniments and body tonics in the notes um, at the beginning of every class. And it's in the And I'll blog. send a link in the, yeah, the and, blog. Yeah. And it's in the blog. Or I can make the body tonic for you. Yeah. And then go ahead, Cindy, then Ollie. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Greg. Hey, hey. Um, so I was really excited this morning. I got first, up. First off, how's, how's Larry? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Moving very you don't have to go into detail, but I was just wanting to see your reaction. Moving very slowly. Um, okay. I, I'm thinking the back heart, awareness on the back heart would be really helpful when he goes into venting. <laughs> oh. uh, so um, I'm anyway, I, I did see him this weekend. For, oh, uh, we just took a walk, but that was anyway. Yeah, it's still some. Yeah. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. So uh, this morning, um, I, I got up and the body um, had a, a, a really sharp pain in the right hip and I couldn't hardly walk. And, and I'm like, okay, what do, what do I do? What do I do? And then I got out the mugwort and mm -hmm. I put it, you know, everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, and I could walk because it freed up the energy. I felt like sure. maybe stuck energy. <laughs> and then I got to work and, it, and, and I did good for a while, but then the pain came back and I decided to go to the chiropractor and she said it was the, it, I'm going to spell it P-I-R-I-F-O-R-M-I-S. Oh, piriformis. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's uh, inflamed and spazzing. Okay. So, um, so piriformis syndrome, like part of part of what that does is it compresses the sciatic nerve. And and so the, is, the issue with that is when it goes into spasm, the sciatic nerve is passing through um, a hole in the pelvis in that area. And so the muscle will push the nerve up against a bone. And so like when it gets like in spasm and a bit inflamed, it's like it kind of inflames that nerve a little bit. And the thing that, you know, it's not just painful, but the thing with the sciatic nerve is it's one of the few nerves where it can stimulate um, uh, like your allergies. Like, you know, it has like immune cells on it that can stimulate like an uh, increase in histamine levels in the body. And so watch your allergies while, while this is going on. And if something starts to happen, you know, just treat treat the allergies however you treat the allergies. I mean, quercetin's always good. Um, uh, uh, what is that? Co coleus or scoli? It's a Ayurvedic herb. Um, that that could be helpful, but I, I'd say quercetin's usually the easier one to do. Um, yeah. Even nettle, like nettle, can do it. Um, say that again. Nettle, stinging nettle. Is that an oil that you have? No, it's an herb. Like it's just things you go get at the health food store. Stinging nettle, is it a capsule? Yeah, I get it in capsule. Okay. 
quercetin is probably what I'd use first. But okay, I'll do yeah, that. Yeah, just do that. Um, but as far as the hip is concerned, then um, like mints, like peppermint, corn mint, things like that can take some pain out. It can free up the, the spasm and reduce some of the inflammation um, and make you pretty comfortable. Um, I wouldn't do a lot of compression. Like, you know, sometimes you go, oh, I got a spasm in my in my hip, so I'll sit on a tennis ball. Like, don't do stuff like that. It, it will actually <laughs> make, it, make it worse. Yeah. And, and so, like, you just need to let it kind of relax. And if anything, you could throw a little ice on it because um, uh, you're just wanting to calm it down. Sometimes people will put a heating pad on it, but um, if it's inflamed, it usually makes it worse. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and so, um, you know, you can also put magnesium on it, like liquid magnesium or like marjoram, um, uh, anything of that nature, just to keep the spasms down and um, a little bit of just resting it. You know, you'll kind of notice that um, when you're standing, that if you pay attention to your butt cheeks, a lot of times, you have like a dominant hip that you're using when you're standing. And it might might have been that it was your dominant hip, but it's starting to switch over to the other side. So it's starting to lose tone a little bit. Just allow yourself to relax a little bit more. And the thing with the piriformis syndrome is when it's really activated, like you'll sit in a chair and you just won't be able to get comfortable in the chair. Like, you know, you like you keep switching around to like find that comfortable spot and it right. just never happens. So you might find that like laying, laying down like on the bed or on the floor or on the couch or something is more comfortable than sitting. And it doesn't mean forever, but just until that disinflames a little bit. But everything's just going to be about anti-inflammatory, like just reduce inflammation. Okay. What yeah. at work should... Uh, what do you, what do you think about sitting on a you know those big balls? You know the really um, big. Yeah, I mean you could play with it. We had one in the office for a while. Did that help your back at all, or? It helped my posture. Yeah, I I mean it, it might help. Like you're able to move around and everything, and so you can change your position a lot. Um, um, yeah, I'd give it a shot. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know that it's going to be like amazing relief, but it, it will at least not be you sitting in the same position for long periods of time. Because when you have sciatica or your piriformis syndrome, um, that just sucks. It just, there's no way around it. Yeah. So um, is is there a, is it just you treat it until it, is there a period of time that it can let go or is it just, it depends on how inflamed it is and how aggravated it's getting throughout the day. And so um, it usually doesn't just go away kind of quickly, but if you start treating it and giving it rest, like a lot of times what people will do is not rest it enough and it takes longer. So if you, if you give it proper rest, which is, you know, not always weight bearing, like when you're standing, and then um, like laying down, like on your back, um, like on the floor or on the bed, you know, kind of a hard surface. And then, you know, even spending like five minutes just going, okay, I'm letting my body relax. So you're not just laying down, but you're like kind of relaxing into it. Um, that, that could be quite helpful. Galbanum internally is always good. And, you know, for this, I like to take some galbanum and rub it on the ajna. And um, it, it just helps um, calm down like the nerves and things in the body. It just allows the body to shift out of being in that pain, pain phase and allows it to relax a little bit more. Okay. So, do you think I should take off work or maybe take the mat? I, mean, I, I would try to work through it at first. Like I, I would say, 
um, if you give your body some rest and everything, you can work through it. But um, what's what's your did stress levels go up or did you get back on that project and it was <laughs> difficult? Actually, um, somebody wandered in and there was a door that was unlocked and this person came in and took a laptop and from um, one of the accountant accountants. And she had a meltdown and she was miserable and she wanted everybody else to be miserable. So I listened to her for one whole day off and on. And the next day she started again and I just closed my door, but I could feel the tension and her having her tantrums. I mean, she went on for three days and she's pretty mad that I closed my door and wouldn't talk to her. <laughs> and it happened right after that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it was stressful to listen to her because she just wouldn't stop. Yeah. So, okay. So just with that, like, um, let's have you use like, um, Hila, not helicrism, hyssop or chakra root cleanser and just several times a day inhale those because you're reducing the tendency to absorb the negativity from other people or the environment. Uh, and so like that, that is a little bit of an issue for me right now. And so going back to what I was saying with um, uh, earlier about like with Lama yoga and everything was that um, whenever stuff's like going on like that, your, your Ming Men like overactivates because it's trying to um, like establish like order or stability or it's reacting to the chaos and the chaos most times is not yours it's it's like in the environment and so when when the body gets tempered enough like those things aren't aren't as agitating but it takes a while to get your body to that spot. And so for most people, you need to manage and stay away from it or be able to calm it down in the moment. And for you in the moment is hiss up and chakra root cleanser. Okay. All right. I, mean, I, I still keep that stuff in my pocket at all times. I mean, all times. I have and, some in my desk. Yeah. Okay. So you just do that, and if anybody says anything, it's colds and flus. And, and <laughs> as uh, long as I I don't put a diffuser in there, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> so I was listening to you talk to Ralph about the Lama Yoga and mm -hmm. relaxing into that and keeping your awareness on the heart. And I was thinking, if I could have even thought to put my my awareness on the back heart. It, it would have helped, but she just, it blew me away the way she acted. Yeah. Like, you know, a situation like that, she's venting and you know, some of it is she wants other people to feel like, you know, this is general, like people just do this. People want them, other people to feel their pain and there might be even a little bit of trying to not that you're trying to say whose fault it is but in her head she's probably trying to offset that something she did maybe made it a little bit her fault be it conscious or unconscious it's understandable everybody does it i'm not saying she's doing anything wrong i'm just saying you know you look at it for what it is and um you know every every day we get up we we kind of do it with the assumption that like okay this is going to be a good day when really sometimes we eat the bear and sometimes the bear eats us you know <laughs> we don't always have a good day and <laughs> you, you know when when you just go okay it's just one of those days you you know yes it's crappy at the end of the day but you shake it off and usually the next day you're fine not everybody's there like you know I, what I mean? I, I couldn't shake it off for three. Well, days. I'm saying even for her, like she's probably going to be bothered for that laptop for years. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, she'll have distractions, but like soon as soon as the laptop or that topic or some some consequence from that laptop being taken comes up, she'll go right back to like the day that it happened. Yeah, and I I did blue her. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. and it it made me feel better. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, gosh. Yeah. So I probably needed to blue me too, huh? Um, it's more of her issue than your issue. Like if if you guys were fighting over the laptop, I'd say both of you. But you know, it's really more her thing than your thing. You just are there, and so yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like you don't want to be like totally disconnected and just like whatever, not my problem. You know, you you want to be able to be supportive and and listen and and you know, because that also is how you fit in also in the group and everything. So you want to acknowledge it, but at the same time, you don't want to lose a couple of days because she had a bad day. I did listen to her yeah. off and on that whole first day. Yeah. But the second okay. day, I couldn't do it. No, no. Yeah. Okay, well, that's great. Thank you. So. And someone's um, checking, is there an oil she could have put on a Kleenex or something that would have helped the woman calm down? Is that advisable or yeah, sure. she could put it on her own body, but to help the other person? Um, well, I'm going to guess that other person was probably pretty wound up. Um, she, she was, Greg, and she wasn't, wouldn't be, that particular person is not open to any oils. No, I think this person, well, well I but, agree with you completely. Yeah, but they, I think they were saying like sometimes you can put something in the environment and just go, yeah. oh, I don't know, it's just for colds and flus, but it like might calm them down. I mean, when somebody's wound up like that, the best thing is Melissa, but you know, even then, I don't know. This is like a weird thing to say, and it's usually not people who um, are working on themselves and healing and stuff. But if you just look at the general public, this is a really weird thing to say. But sometimes when something like that happens, it's almost like it has a kind of value to them. Like it... An un unregulated solar plexus feels alive with the ups and downs of the day. And it doesn't matter that it was exhilarating and happy or horrible and upsetting. It just likes the up and downs of the day. And, you know, sometimes there's motivation not to let it go. You know, it doesn't happen usually in circles where holistic things are being done or higher levels of like in corporate settings or stuff. But the general public out there walking around, it's a little bit of a thing. You know, not always, but you, you like when you go through and observe it, just a little bit that I know of this person, I would say uh, she was not wanting to let go of the drama of it all. Uh, Sidney, like, you have any reference for that? Does that make any sense? Oh, yeah. She doesn't, she did, she wasn't going to let it go. And yeah, she's still yeah. mad. Yeah. Like, yeah. this is, this is, it's been like five or six days. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, see, what happens is, like, the reason why I say it has like a value. Like, so at first, like, okay, the person's upset. And then it's like, you know, you're already talking about like, I want your undivided attention because I'm upset. And then the next phase is like, I don't have to be as productive or I get what I want in these situations because something bad happened and I'm upset. Like, it's, it's like this value that keeps like, being cashed out almost in these situations where you know 
I mean, crappy things happen. And yes, it's bad. But at the same time, you're like, okay, I got to turn it into insurance, got to call the cops. I got to shake it off. I just got to suck it up and deal with it, whatever it is. But, you know, I got work to do. I got this to do. I got family to go to. You know, you, know, you start going, okay, uh, sucks that it happened, but got to keep moving. Where they keep wanting to cash that out for a little while. Okay. Do, does that make sense to you? It does. And as as you were saying that, some situations in my past, because you know me, <laughs> do I do that? Um, we all have the potential. I I can't think of a particular time or situation where that's happened. But I mean, if I sat and thought about it, even in my past, I'm sure that I've done it. You, you know, we all have the potential to to do it. And, you know, part of part of like being in pain and all that, you know, we have the potential to even go there. And I find in myself, the use of the galvanum like diminishes my tendency to do that. And so... You know, the galvanum is great because it's it takes tension out of the body. It reduces pain. It does all these things. But also, it's like, that's usually a byproduct of being in pain. And here, it's more psychological pain than physical pain. And so if you know, like, okay, this is happening because of pain, then try to diminish the pain in the moment. And then the chain reaction diminishes. Like, I would say that... It's not so much that she does it or doesn't do it. I would say she's not very good at managing pain, either in her body or psychological pain. She probably doesn't have a very good skill set. So for galvanum, it, so should I do that internally or just on the Ajna? Ajna, wrist, internal. I mean, literally, uh, I take it at least once a day, sometimes twice a day. Like I just, I go through, uh, what, what did we figure out? Like, you know, we went through like about a month ago and we were looking at like, what, just out of curiosity, what's like our top oils that we, we sell? And, um, you know, most people it's lavender, peppermint, lemon, you know, stuff like that. Um, galvanum, number four, <laughs> you know, it's. Like that, I, I push it on everybody because I mean, it's just, I mean, for one, it's in a lot of anointing oils. Um, it's a good for, for pain. It's good for tension, but it, it does some things about expansion where, where pain makes you kind of go inward and like fixated and like the galvanum just opens that up a little bit. And it, it could be physical, psychological, things at work. It doesn't matter why it's there. It just diminishes it. And so I would say, even if you don't see it, like bank on that it's there. Because it might not be extreme like hers, but we all got it to some degree. The Dalai Lama's got it to some degree. Everybody's got it to some degree. Yeah, that that's good. I'll, I'll you, you know, I, I, would, I, I can't think of any time where that's jumped out at me, like with stuff that was going on. OK, yeah, because, <laughs> you know, it's good to see what you do um, yeah. with the galvan. I'm, I'm glad you said that, because for a while I was taking it and, you know, with the hand and yeah. it it totally took all the pain out. Yeah. But then it felt like it stopped working. So I quit taking it. But yeah, um, you can take little breaks, but I'd, I'd go back to it. Or even if it's just like at night, you put it on your feet or something, just get it on your skin. Okay. All yeah. right. Thank you. Yeah. And then go ahead, Ollie. And then we have. Hey, Ollie. Cats. Hello, Greg. How are you, my friend? How's Italy? Oh, uh, now it's. Uh, it became finer after two months uh, because uh, I miss you and uh, to be and uh, I was not able to be present in, on the weekend for a couple of months because uh, several uh, uh, health issue, fa family health issue happens during the oh, last wow. two months. A lot of them. 
and uh, so I try to take care uh, as much yeah. as I can of everyone. And uh, now it seems that uh, the things go go. It's going better for oh, uh, everyone. <laughs> But um, so I, I think for the end of this month, I will be able to be back on, on oh, the yeah. live session. <laughs> it will be, I, I really miss because when I, when I, when I follow the weekend live, I, I have another, another kind of energy. I feel another kind yeah, of energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. Now I'm looking at the workbook and uh, I try to do something, but Unfortunately, the time is really yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not too much in this period. One of the health issues that happened is on my father. Okay. Uh, one month, uh, one uh, yeah, uh, nearly at the end of September, he had an art art attack. Oh, yeah, and uh, the. Um, coronary artery that was that gone uh, on the left ventricle was uh, completely blocked and so they 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 operate they do some kind of uh, surgery but not so invasive and mm -hmm. uh, the situation go better in a while i did a several kind of several uh, eating on him right. and and now the scar on the front uh, part of the heart muscle is reduced but i would like to ask you if i can if you can suggest me some essential oil to use on him helichrysum would be the best um black black cumin also would reduce scar scar tissue from the inside out but okay. topically helichrysum would work best and then the other thing that you could give for reducing scar tissue on the inside out would be uh, MSM. Or, like, yeah, you know, MSM. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, know. yeah, just a little bit of MSM daily, and that could be helpful. The thing with the, with the heart attack, you know, they did a study, um, I think it was back in India, but there, there's that Ayurvedic herb Arjuna. Yeah, I know. And Arjuna given to somebody post like heart attack really helped to revitalize the heart. And so I, I would put him on some Arjuna for, for a while. Like, you, you know, whenever his system can start handling, like being able to take herbs and things again, I, you know, you could start slow, but I'd work up to like probably three capsules, like two or three times a day at some point. All right, because he is under uh, several medication now, yeah. and more of them are uh, to make the blood more fluid. I don't know in English right. the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, uh, I will check if uh, I'll do that. Yeah, right? you might want to just wait till everything calms down and then put him on that to rehab later. But you know, they did studies, and it it definitely helped improve heart function. One of the things too is like how we were talking about um, using green and red, yeah. like sweep, like sweep the heart, not energizing, but sweep the heart with like green and then red and then green and not really energizing it, but just keep sweeping green and red and like visualize the heart and just start kind of like going, okay, where do I feel like energies that are like poking out and then work that specific spot. Like you almost kind of are trying to make it all smooth. And like if wherever little spots are poking out or going in too far, green and red, green and red. Well, thank you. Thank you. Really, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I can do also with the crystals or just- Yeah, I, I would suggest using a crystal. Yeah. Crystals. Uh, yeah. Front uh, front side of the heart and also yeah, back front side back. of the heart. Yeah. Front yeah. 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 Art muscles. Yeah. And, but but the iricrism I can do now. I can do yeah. Yeah, without yeah. a problem. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, you know, helichrysum will make the blood a little fluid too. Like, you know, they're they're giving him blood thinners. Um, I wouldn't use like tons of it, but like a few drops here and there, it'll be fine. Oh, okay. Thank you for your advice. Yeah. yeah. And and please keep us posted. Like you, you know, anything you need for, for your dad there, let us know. Oh, thank you, thank you. You're really really kind. Can I ask you another question? Yeah, of course. 
and uh, this is uh, for another health issue related to this period for the the varicose vein. Okay. okay. And uh, so the problem is that uh, my wife has this kind of uh, problem to the legs, and sometimes varicose vein becomes really, really aching. Yeah. Pain. And so some um, some medical some doctor uh, suggests her to do the uh, surgery of Safina or something like this. But she she was right. She doesn't want to. So so I would do a couple of things. I I would do um Cyprus internally. Yeah. Um, like four like I do like four or six drops like twice a day. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would go at it kind of hard. And then the other thing is I would give her, um, you can give her go, go to cola, you know, go like to cola, herb, go to cola. like ha yeah, have yeah. Her take a, like three capsules twice a day as well. And that should reduce a lot of the, the issues with the varicose veins between the two that sh that should reduce it somewhat. I mean, it might take a few days to bring some relief, but you know, it takes over a period of time. Uh, it, it should, should help with that. So with the Cyprus, can, can, I can, uh, she can go on, on uh, for months. Taking she can, the... she can live on Cyprus for the rest of her life. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> like it's All right. very toning. It's very gentle. Like you could even do way bigger dosages. Like it's just, you know, it's, it's very gentle. You don't have to worry about like two weeks on two weeks off. You just, you could do it and just keep doing it and doing it. Oh, All right. Yeah. The normal Cyprus, the standard yeah, Cyprus. Yeah, just normal yeah. Cyprus, yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. And last, last question, mm -hmm. because uh, it, uh, in this busy period, another thing has happened, and uh, we find a dog uh, that was uh, in a, a dog shelter for seven years, and we oh, decided wow. to take uh, at home, because uh, she was really, he was, uh, he has... Uh, he is really traumatized for the yeah. seven past years. Yeah. C can I use some oils to help him to become more confident with the room? Yeah. Uh, with the use, use basil. Put like a few drops of basil on, on your hand and yeah. then start at the tail and go up the spine like against the fur. Like you're kind of okay. rubbing your hand into the skin, but, you know, just go like up, up, the, up the back. So um tail up to the neck yeah yeah yeah. i understand daily i can do it daily yeah 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 okay does <laughs> it be neat or in that you, you could do it neat or if the dog feels like it's a little too sensitive how big of a dog is it is it little medium big? uh 20, 20 kilos so me um yeah you could probably do it neat um if you feel that you need to dilute it a little bit you could just put a, like a little tiny bit of alcohol in your hand and all right together and then do it like that yeah you could do more it. than once a day or just once uh, a probably day? once a day is enough um you you could do it like morning and night but um you know once a day like after a while it'll keep calming it down calming it down you'll start to see like a change in the behavior over a period of time and you you might at some point you know start doing it like every couple of days or just when you guys leave or you know but for a while do it every day yeah oh thank you thank you your uh, suggestions are gracious as always and i um looking forward to be back on uh, uh i think i'll be back on the bagus nerve class because the weekend uh, i that Oh, from that weekend, I will be free. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> and uh, thank you, Greg. You're really so welcome. Great. Keep us posted, though, like especially with your dad. Like you know, whatever's going on, keep us posted. Yes, and maybe send us a picture of that doc. All right. Yeah. All right. yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. And go ahead, Barbara, and then we have some chat questions. Hey there. Hey. So what I was tripping or whatever I was doing Sunday, you suggested that I get the um, majesty from the Ming Ming class. Yes. Um, and so that did 
seemed to calm things a bit. And then I picked up the bottle of Inner Sense and said, well, let me play with this one too. And I did, the, I did the three brains and three transmutation centers with it. And that just seemed super nice. And I wondered if you could tell me what Inner Sense is doing. Um, it, so like you could say like the tendency when the, the positive tendency when that chakra, you know, be it the Bing Men is functioning properly, it develops that like inner sense, but in a positive way. You know, things are quieting down, it's organizing, and it's like a deeper level of awareness. On a negative part, we have the same mechanisms, but it makes us more reactive and more just kind of reactive to like the chaotic situations in the environment and so the more that you work it even when things are super chaotic it's like your main man goes yeah but in a couple of days we'll have this we'll have this all organized or we'll have it in order no need uh you know for the body to get agitated and so it just kind of calms everything down so that your body is less reactive and it is able to stimulate more like mental function, more cognitive function rather than like reaction. And so, you know, majesty is the holy name and the inner sense is like kind of a quality within that, that chakra. And so, um, yeah, any of the stuff for that class is good, but especially the majesty but that inner sense is nice. You know, I, I use it from time to time. It's been a while since I've used it, but. Um, yeah, it was kind of a fun discovery to look in the game. Yeah. Oh, well, let me play with this one too. Yeah. But majesty first or would inner sense stand Whichever on its own Whichever one too? is working for you. Like, like okay. you know, I'd go back and forth between the two, but um, yeah. You know, because like, you know, you still could even work in, you know, Raphael is there and then the spirit right. is there and. You know, you could you could work in all of that, but um, yeah. When we were talking over the weekend, I was like, you know, given everything that we were talking about, like Majesty seemed to be a good like hit because you know you're you're with with that blend, you're increasing the conductivity to the holy name of that chakra. Ah, okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Good, and Thank so it you. does feel better. Yeah, it does. Yeah, good. Um, Very good. For now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you there. <laughs> Life. <laughs> yeah. Um, an update I wanted to give to Greg. Last week, he gave me guidance for a friend with tinnitus using sage and lantana. She's been doing it twice a day for a week. She said the tinnitus is slightly improving. The oils are helping her sinuses and throat congestion. And she'll keep it up and I'll report back again next week. Mm -hmm. I wonder, do, um, do they have any rosemary? Uh, I don't have any rosemary, but I could get some for her. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm curious to see what rosemary would do for, for her. Just regular. Yeah, r r any of the rosemary, rosemary, verbena, whatever you got. Like I okay. would just, um, inhaling it. Yeah, inhaling it and maybe even a couple of drops internally. Okay. Let's let's have them do both. Yeah. Okay. We'll add that in. Perfect. Thanks. Could you talk a little bit about the upcoming class, the medulla oblongata and the vagus nerve? What's it about? Yeah. Um the thing with the medulla, 
yeah, it's kind of like what I was talking about with Ralph, where there's like these different phases and, and really when you're looking at the function of the medulla, um, it, it helps facilitate the, the bringing in of the soul and there's like a, like a sound or a, a rhythm that kind of comes when there's greater alignment with that. And it's, it's about aligning the, the different bodies and it's about um, further further like purifying the bone marrow which you know when we think of the ego we think of the ego as being like in our mind you know or a byproduct of our emotions in our mind but really the ego is probably more a byproduct of the quality of our blood or more importantly our bone marrow because there's so much information and imagery that's in the blood and the bone marrow that um, it's almost like uh, when those things haven't been purified enough we're just so drawn to like negative things or things that cause us harm or, you know, we learn things through hard knocks, however you want to say it. And you could almost say like, you know, there's the alignment of the different bodies and how I was talking about it in the phases or the steps with Ralph. Um, I would say two things about the medulla. I mean, we're going to say more than that in the class, but two points. And one is, it's almost like your inner altar. Like, you know, the altar where you're going to make something happen. You're going to bring something in. And depending on what you have on your altar is what you're attracting and bringing in. Your medulla is a lot like that. Like whatever however the medulla has been prepped or not prepped kind of dictates almost like an inner quality within you. And the other thing that I would say about the medulla is your effectiveness of dissipating karmic patterns or karmic imagery is dictated on how well the medulla is esoterically functioning, not physically functioning, esoterically functioning. And so, yeah, you know, we just did the vagus nerve class, the physical and spiritual aspects of the vagus nerve that really laid a lot of groundwork. This class is... Um, um, There's technique there, but it's not a lot of busy technique. It's more about like turning inward and working certain processes and taking it deeper. And when that happens, let's just say you, you start to kind of go with the flow of life. You, you hear the inner sound. You have more inner guidance. You start putting yourself in the right place at the right time. You know, things are not just aligning in your energy body and your emotional body and your mental body, but even with the environment, everything's like aligning. So, um, can we do a bucket? I just got that.
Yeah. And go ahead, Barbara. Hey, Miss Barbara. So I have an oddball question. Mm -hmm. Is there any connection between the vital center corpus striatum and the ears? Any of the stuff in the head would impact it, but um, I sort of have a practice of inhaling these in succession during these Tuesday nights. And I got to that one and it felt like my right ear wanted to drain something, but it's not really in the ear canal. It might be just total coincidence, but. Uh, I, th I think there's like a bit of a connection. Has that ever happened to you before? Possibly, but not to this extent. I can go back and check my my notes, my my skimpy notes. Uh, l let me look into it a little bit. Like, I you know, I, I see a little something there, but I'm not quite sure what I'm seeing. Okay. I mean, it seemed almost immediate when I started inhaling yeah. that. So, yeah. um, just curious. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I think it's time to do a practice, but let me just make sure I didn't miss any other questions. I think we're good. Okay. So, you know, I know you guys have been doing the plant empowerments um, through the last, what has it been, 14 days. And how about we do... Um, something to connect with a plant, but to a much deeper degree, but something a little bit different than what you guys have been doing. We're gonna go a little free form. So how about we pick just a single oil that that you wanna work with? Um, you know what, caution to the wind. Uh, just pick an oil that you like, pick one of your favorites, be it a blend, whatever, something you're working with right now something that's kind of a bread and butter oil or some esoteric thing that is just like, you know, your little inner practice. And it's like, mm, this is mine, you know, whatever it is. And we'll do something to make that oil a little bit more sassy for you. Okay, so you have your oil. So open it up and just take a few long, slow, deep breaths. They were going to go way off script here. So close the bottle up and just look at it and just form a connection with that plant. Or if it's a blend, those plants. Okay, so you're connecting with the plant. It's it's capped. The bottle is, you know, it's closed. You're just connecting with the plant itself. And as you inhale, draw in the essence of the plant. And as you exhale, exhale, feel something leave your body and go back to the plant, back to the bottle. So you're like breathing in, breathing out. 
Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Now, keep doing that in and then out. And as you breathe out, breathe through the bottle, not just to the bottle, but like you're going past the bottle by a few feet. So in and then breathe out through the bottle. The bottle is just a vessel that your breath is passing through. And then just be still for a moment. And then uncap the bottle and start taking long, slow, deep breaths. Which one are you doing? All the joy. And then just be still for a moment. Again, inhaling again, your awareness is on your temples. Just right here, the temples.
we're going to let it go. Just be still for a moment. Begin inhaling again, this time just your left temple. Inhaling just on your left temple. Let the left temple go. Move your awareness to the right temple. Your awareness is on the right temple. Move your awareness back to the left temple. Move your awareness back to the right temple. Do both temples at the same time.
And then just be still for a moment. Let everything go. Keep your eyes closed. Just let it incubate. Now again, hold the ball in front of you. You're going to breathe in the essence, but instead of going to the heart, it's going to the ajna, the area between the eyebrows. <coughs> Inhale. Exhale. Back to the bottom. Be still, keep your eyes open, stay connected to the bottle. Your awareness is still between your eyebrows. So your awareness is on the ajna between your eyebrows and the bottle at the same time. And then silently repeat with me. Om. Mani Padme Um Um Mani Padme Um Um Mani Padme be still.
Okay, let's do an experiment. First, open up the bottle and inhale the bottle. How does it feel when you inhale it now? Did something change? Let's do an experiment. Move your two shoulders around. Okay, so let's have you inhale one of, inhale the oil that you're using with your left shoulder. Your awareness is on your left shoulder, the armpit, the, the top, the sides, the front, the back. Inhale. And then be still. Now, feel the difference between your left shoulder and your right shoulder. All right, something's happening, yeah. Now, let's have you look at the bottle again. Connect with the Ajna. Now your awareness is on your right shoulder. You're not inhaling yet. Just put your awareness on the right shoulder. Feel the armpit. The front, the back, the sides, the top of the shoulder. You're just being aware. And with your awareness on that shoulder, you're still not inhaling. You're going to keep your awareness on that shoulder and you're going to do the mantra. Om. Mani Padme Om Mom. Mom. 
does be still. Look at the bottle of oil, connect with it. Your awareness is between your eyebrows. Om Go. Your awareness is on that right shoulder again. Up the oil, inhale it with your awareness on your right shoulder. Be still. So we're chanting the mantra Om Mani Padme Hum, which for one is a way to bring light into an object or situation into you. And another way of saying that is by working with the plant, you're increasing the level of oneness that's passing through. Mm -hmm. Connecting with the plant, breathing it in and then breathing through it you're also bringing in the essence of the plant you know there's the essence of the structure of the plant and then there's the essence that passes through the plant so by doing that you're bringing in both then you're calming down the body where you're wanting to address it you're chanting no money pa me home in the area of the body where you're starting to bring light into that area and then by going back and forth between the body part and the oil, like you're starting to increase like a level or degree of oneness between the plant and the area. So it makes the plant much more effective in doing things that even are beyond what we would know is it's going to treat this symptom or that symptom, or it's going to make me feel better emotionally. There's a whole 
kind of personality of the plant that comes through and the plant kind of does what it's going to do. You know, it's acting as a vessel. And so if you compare your right shoulder to your left shoulder, granted, we did mantras on it and everything, but how does the right shoulder feel compared to the left shoulder? How does it feel for you? Actually feels stronger. Yeah. So Samantha says, not only does it feel better, it feels like stronger, right? And it might depend on what oil that you used. I think she was using aloes. Yeah. So she was using aloes. But um, let's go ahead and have people in mute or ask questions. You know, this isn't something like where we're going like, ah, this is a technique. This is starting to be a little bit more of that mystical practice where you just start doing something spontaneous and you start doing these steps and then ah, there's like this window that opens and then or a door that opens and then you just walk through it. So you just kind of start doing these things and then ah, something starts to happen, a shift, uh, whatever that might be. So anyway, we'll be practicing this like kind of approach. Um, over the next several months but it's it brings in a lot of healing essence when you do it in this way rather than just following a template so anybody want to share or ask questions you're going to mute yourself or type in um i wanted to ask i one of the things i noticed when we're doing these practices is um, the monkey mind keeps mm -hmm. getting in the way, like, mm -hmm. I, you know, squirrel thing, squirrel thing, squirrel thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, you know, and then there's this other part of me that just says, just enjoy the process. Just, you know, mm -hmm. don't make anything happen, just go with it. And of course, when that, you know, there's a brief moment when that happens and I think, okay, here I am. And then squirrel. And, and I, I guess my question is, is that just normal? <laughs> Yeah, that, that's pretty normal. And a, a lot of the monkey mind is actually um, the nervous system. And so things that are very calming to the nervous system can be things like sage and vetiver, spike nard. Um, I mean, all kinds of things can be calming and soothing to the nervous system. But, you know, you'll have periods where it's calm and then you have periods where still monkey mind is there. And, and so the the goal would be to you know you go out during the day you might have monkey mind a little bit but you want to be able to come back and calm down and it's like the more you keep calming it down calming it down calming it down at some point it just when you're out doing activity it does the activity thing and then when it comes down back home and you're settling down it's like okay it's time to calm down and it's it's really just kind of a training of the nervous system you could say but like oils that would do it would be like sage vetiver spike nard um the you know the blue oils they're they're very good even things like um spruces and firs frankincense myrrh galbanum all of those can be very kind of quieting to the mind as well. Okay. Yeah. How how was your process though? How did that feel? Oh, it felt wonderful. Um, yeah. it was and and the difference between the shoulders. So my right shoulder is my bad shoulder because when I was mm -hmm. born, I was actually paralyzed in my my right side. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And so so when I first test, it's like, oh, the right one is oh, all crunchy and weird again tonight. Right. Um, but um so we did the left one and the left one just felt very relaxed and open. And the right one was still kind of like, it, I'm going to say invisible, I guess is the right. word that comes to mind. Yeah. Um, and then after we did the right shoulder, it feels much more smooth and open right. and visible, I guess is the best way to put it. Oh, good. So like when you say crunchy, like um, use things like um, helichrysum or. That's the oil that I used actually oh, for this. Perfect. Yeah. So put your awareness on that shoulder blade, like because the the crunchy part is actually coming from a muscle that covers the like the top of that shoulder blade, mm -hmm. and the more you kind of do that, it'll take some of that crunchiness out of the shoulder. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. And go yeah. ahead. Hey, is it my hey. turn? 
Yes, hey. yes. Okay. Um, wow. Um, that was an interesting one with the uh, shoulders. Um, I checked in, you know, we started with the left, which was very open and kind of clear and compared it against the right, which was before we did anything on the right. And it was definitely just kind of, yeah, <laughs> much more, less open, like very close, mm -hmm. if you will. And then even um, not really inhaling with the oil, but after the mantra and the mm -hmm. perception on the oil, they were both like open and similar. It was like very, uh, both, like they both were open. They kind of both felt the same kind of thing. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And then with the, uh, when looking at it with the uh, awareness on the Ajna, uh -huh. it felt like the center of the Ajna was like about this big. It felt huge. <laughs> a lot of a lot of pressure on there. Yeah. yeah. And it almost felt like I was looking through the Ajna. Uh, when yeah. holding, oh, beautiful. That's the beautiful. Holding the, yeah. Uh, yeah. It looks like, well, my eyes plus the Ajna were looking at it. So that was kind of cool. So very, very interesting. Like what starts to happen is the more we do the practice, especially with the three brains, is even though you're looking through the Ajna oh. and you're looking through the eyes, it's actually the inner eye that starts to process it. And so even the idea of using Omani Padme Hum also kind of stimulates, stimulates that potential. And so it's, it's, it's like the... Um, the soul, the essence, your energy body starts utilizing the light coming in through, you know, the cord and through the mental permanent seed for healing, mixing with the plant and utilizing the energy of the plant. It's like this little like mixing thing starts happening and it's like it's mixing and mixing and then ah, it releases into an area. And really what you're doing is for one, you're being conductive, for one, you're generating more essence. But you're kind of following and training the body, the emotions, the mind, the mechanics for a dramatic shift or change to happen or a miracle to happen. Like, doesn't mean it's always going to happen, but it, it allows for a much greater potential by going through and doing this. You know? Yeah. Cool. cool. I had another uh, question with respect mm -hmm. to... I mean, we just did the body parts, the shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, I need to work on my lungs. I mean, I have asthma and it's they're not very healthy. Mm -hmm. Is there a good oil to do like a similar process with? I, yeah. With doing um, all Mani Padme Om and, uh, you know, bringing light into that for healing? Um, I would use probably large. You could Arch. use, yeah, one of the spruces. Okay. You could use... Um, uh, hyssop, uh, to tolu balsam. Um, which one? Which one? I'm sorry. Uh, to tolu balsam. Oh, I see it there. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Um, even chakra root cleanser, and so do the lungs, but also do the bottom of the throat, the throat minor. Okay. Like really work the throat minor, probably more than anything. Oh, instead of just directly on the lungs, then work the... Yeah, I mean, work the lungs, but the more you open that up, the more it becomes easier to treat the, the lungs. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah, like, do, do that, and then let me know how that goes. I will. Thank you. We're going to do, some, like, you know, when we do our free study group things, we're going to do a deeper kind of healing practice, utilizing oils and mantras and you know all prayer and all that kind of stuff um in december so we'll 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 be taking this a little bit more in depth go ahead priya hey priya hi thank hey. you so much for this um few questions yes first one sometimes when i'm smelling the essential oils the the smell is so strong and clear and it's just all my senses sort of tingle. And then one morning I will start smelling the same oil and there will be absolutely nothing. Like I can't smell anything. And there it, is. It, it could be a little bit of like a blockage in the nose, but sometimes when you go more into like that intuitive space, 
the the senses aren't quite as strong as um, normal. So I wouldn't read a lot into that. I, I mean, I'd still do the practice, but it just probably means a different part of the mind is working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I just sort of try to then hold on to the intention that, okay, it's okay, I can't smell anything, yeah. but I just intend that something is going inside. Yeah, perfect. Second one, while we were doing the temple minor chakras, and this is mm-hmm. something that I've noticed previously during my practice also, that I don't feel anything on my left temple minor chakra. Like, it's that, sometimes that's okay. even... Different. That's actually quite normal. It, it usually one or the other. And so um, the, the goal is like going back and forth. You're actually trying to balance them out. But we're usually a little bit more dominant on one side than the other at first. And so, I, again, I wouldn't read a lot into that. Um, most most times people feel it more on the left than the right. You know, it's because you're, you're still you're hitting your prefrontal cortex. And but even within that, there's more of like a logical side and intuitive side. And um, it just probably means intuition is a little bit more of a thing in that area for you than the logical side. Most people, it's a little bit more on the logical side, but the ideal is to be able to feel it like almost equally on both sides. Yeah, yeah. And and that sort of, that is me, more intuitive and yeah, less sure. logical. <laughs> The yeah. third question would be the monkey mind. And mm-hmm. um, when we're having those thoughts with the unconscious mind and we're still trying to do the practice, but the unconscious mind is sort of making all the so paying attention to the uh, inhaling. Yeah, so, so the monkey mind is so switched on and there's the thought yeah. quality is not so great. So is it that all the negative thoughts are kind of fixating in the in that body part? It's it's more that like the nervous system is a bit agitated or like stimulated, and and so you can you can try using like there's levels, you can try using Omani Padme Hum, but sometimes when the when the nervous system is is a little agitated, the Om Shanti mantra like om shanti 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 om that can be a little bit more calming to the nervous system then you have the lama yoga movements you know the turtle breath that also can do it but Mm -hmm. um remember when we were talking the vetiver on the arms and the legs that that should calm Mm -hmm. it down quite a bit and like if you do like applying it or inhaling it on the arms and legs over a period of time the the mind should be, even if it gets a little agitated, should keep quieting down faster and faster. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. And we need to jump over to the Astara um, prayer petition blessing. So great talking with you guys. You know, we talked about that tomorrow night, we wouldn't be able to do the study group, but we are on, we rearranged our schedule a bit. So for the Vegas Nerve class, um, study group is on tomorrow night. And uh, same with the Astara sessions. And we will uh, hopefully see a bunch of you for the transformational astrology. Or is that what it is? Yeah. On the weekend. So anyway, um, we're going to jump over to Astara right now. Join us if you can. It's a good way to get a, a little feeling good and generate some good karma and so if not maybe we see you tomorrow night